Welcome back. We have been speaking with astute businessman and the producer and supplier of the more than 40 million permanent voters card that was used in the 2015 elections, Alaji Sani Musan is still with us. Thanks for staying with us. Thank you very much. So let me ask you, at some point you sojourned into politics. T tell me how that journey went. Uh, I did. As far back as 2003. Uh, because I saw the kind of people that were going into politics and to my own admiration, I felt that I should be a better class than that. Uh, politics is a very good thing that it's something that every one of us need to do. But the way it's going at a point, it became very discouraging. Very discouraging. Because virtually all the political parties were abusing the, their own rules. The guidelines are not being followed. The umpires were not uh, there as umpires. The, even the, 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 the security agencies that are supposed to make sure that everything that is black and white, law and order, mm. it's been followed are not being followed. I can give you a, cite you one very good example. Was when we were going for the primaries, we saw that the whole rule has been violated. And we reported it to the then police commissioner who was in Mina. And he said, no, I cannot do anything about it. I said, but rule is rule. And uh, when we eventually could not find any head on, we decided, almost all the contestants decided to... Uh, step down. No, not step down. To, to what do you call it? We, we decided to boycott. Boycott, okay, back yeah, out. We yeah. boycotted it. And eventually, even with the boycotts, a, a, a winner emerged. <laughs> and a winner that was not even in the primaries, was not even someone that even bought the form. It's not someone that even went through the primaries. It's not someone that even went around the state to, to propagate his ideals, mm. to say, this is what I want. So what, what will you see at the end of the day if that kind of person became a leader? Definitely, you can't see anything better. Mm. And that is what happened to almost all the states of this country. Mm. And that is why today you've seen the rot in the system. Mm. If we can set our rules and follow those rules, I think Nigeria will be better be a for better it. place. So let me ask you how, how it works for you. You know, at the time when the permanent voters card, you know, came out, there was there was a lot of noise. There was a lot of clamor on how it was going to work. How, how was that process for you? I know that at some point you were picked up by the DSS over issues surrounding the permanent voters card and the secu security of the permanent voters card. How did you weather that storm? Uh, this will be the first time I'm going to make any public comments on this uh, most important issue, and I honestly did not want to make any comment. I wanted to leave it. But I think you've given me a very good opportunity to do that. Uh, from history, from 1960, if you look at how elections have been conducted in this country, it calls for concern mm. for any right-thinking Nigeria. Nigerian. You can see the caliber of leaders that we have had through a system that only manufactured them. Not a system where the electorate said, we want this person and we want him and he is there. But if you look at election in 2015, it was completely different. And what I did, I went for the best, one of the best companies that deploy over 1 billion cards per annum. That is Obetos in Paris, in France. If you have a credit card from a well-recognized bank, look at the bank, you will see Obetos. I went, got them to buy into this project. They did. And believe you me, if I tell you today, I know most Nigerians don't know how much that PBC was produced at. That PBC has a chip. RFID chip. And today, if you're looking for that chip, 
the size of that chip, you can't get it for anything less than one dollar fifty. Mm. What was one dollar? What was the exchange rate of one dollar in, in 2012? It was more than 100 naira. Yeah. By 140, I think. But still, we were able to produce these cards at the rate of 60 naira, contract sum of 60 naira. Less than 10 percent, it came to it will come to about 58 naira. When I went to France, they gave me of a blood set price, which should have brought me back to Nigeria to say we cannot and We are do not it. interested anymore. We are not interested. The consultant advised that we should return it and say we cannot do it. I said, no. I believe in that word impossibility. And I believe in that word possible. You can make impossibility possible. And that was what we did. I went to China. I spent 23 days in China. From one city, from Shanghai to Beijing, from Beijing to Guangzhou to, to Nahai to where, everywhere. I said, we must find a solution. I got from the components of this card, I got one solution from one city that can work. And I got another solution from another city. And I got another solution from another city. And China is just like a small world. Hmm. You know, the world is the global mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, the co whole components have been put together. Put in together at a very ridiculous price because we were given, because that's most of them have never been given an order of 70 million at one go. Hmm. A lot of Nigerians did not know this thing transferred. They came back, they said, oh, these cards can be cloned. These cards, uh, the chip is a cloned chip. It's NXP that we clone it, this is cloned. I said, no. Before, when you are doing a sensitive project for a whole country that has to do with the economic and political development of a nation like Nigeria. Nigeria is a very, very hot country. Volatile. Volatile country. That little thing can trigger. You have to be very careful. The security access module is what now gave the PBC a cover, a security cover. Okay, that's that, what made it secure. That, that was what made it secure. And nobody has the code, actually. Even I, I, at the time that the DSS picked me up, I do not have it. And the DSS then came, invited me, on a friendly note, we sat down together, we smiled at each other. We did everything. And this thing has been happening for over six months. They will invite me, oh, you are a friend. I will go as a friend. I'm doing a national, a, a, a national project. Project, yeah. But to my greatest surprise, the same national project I was doing became a threat, not only to the project, but to my own life. I came to the office, coming to the office, the whole place was barricaded by the military. <laughs> Something I've never seen. Meanwhile, we still have DSS officials in our premises. So, so many things happened. I was invited. Do you know Mr. A? I said, I don't know him. I've never seen him. I only see him on TV. <laughs> he said, no, you're lying. He has given you 3 billion naira. I said, show me where the 3 billion naira <laughs> is. You had a meeting in Lagos. We know you the time you went. I said, it's not me. <laughs> OK, you, who did you give this? I said, I'm not giving anybody. How did you give PDP? I said, no, PDP will want, if they, they can have it from me, they will want to take it because that is the reason why you are, you are, you are asking me all the questions. <laughs> but I don't have it. Okay, did you give it to APC? I said, no, I did not give it to APC. Did you do anything with APC? I said, no, I did not do anything with APC. You say, it's a lie. I said, okay, prove it to me. Hmm. So there was no proof. 
And to the best of my knowledge, before God and man, one day I would be asked, when I was doing this project, did I give any side advantage over the other? I can swear by my life that I did not. Mm. Mm. I did not. Because I want to maintain it as where I will be eating and where my children will come and eat mm. to. Yeah. So this was what happened. I was detained for eight days under a very bad condition. For the eight days I had, that I had been with the DSS, I had my bath only once, and it's not bathing. Mm. We have to, the guy that was looking after me had to steal me downstairs where the Boko Haram guys were kept and opened a tub and gave me this one water rubber mm. and I was using it to pour water on my head. They will go and bring a rotten banana and give to me to eat. And in a country where you said you want a good future. Mm. Mm. So, to attest it and to cap it all, I don't think Nigeria have had any good election better than the 2015 mm. election. Mm. And the use of the card reader and the PBC is the best thing that has ever happened to this happened country. To. I'm sure a lot of Nigerians will agree with you that, you know, the 2015 elections were, 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 were indeed different. They, they were different. They, yeah. they were a reflection of what the people were, were thinking at the time exactly. and what they wanted at the time. Exactly. So, so, you know, as any of this obviously affected your, you know, plain partisan politics. Cause... I've been on sabbatical actually with politics because I want to more or less set up my business and make it what it should be. I have not seen politics as a profession mm. as far as I'm concerned. And uh, today, if you look at it, so many things are not going right with the system. And this is a decay. It is now that the present administration is trying to look at different areas to see what they can do. But it's not going to be easy. It's not something that can be achieved within a short period mm. of time. The decay has been for a very long time. How much confidence do you have in, in the Buari led administration, the fight against corruption, and everything that is? going on right now in the country? There is one undisputable belief I have that uh, I've even said it, even when the DSS accused me of so many things then, I said it, I said, they captured from my Facebook account and said, are you the one that wrote this? I said, yes, about Buhari, I said, yes. I said, they said, why did you write it? I said, because I have absolute belief in his principles. This was the man that was a military governor. This was the man that was a minister of petroleum. This was the man that was a head of state. In Nigeria, give somebody head of state, even if it is for three days. <laughs> three days is a different person. Obviously. His statue is different. Tell me, how did you get to appreciate him? Appreciate some, I mean, his principles. This was somebody that I happened to be in the same flight with him going to London. And I don't want to mention where he was sitting and where I was sitting. Mm. And this is before he was saying, I want to become president, or I'm the president, or I'm what? But he is Muhammad Buhari. And the same person, which he never knew this has transpired. And the same person, we went to a restaurant on Edgeway Road, me and my friends. This person came in, and we saw what happened at the restaurant. And I have absolute belief that if such a person can go the way that man was going, then is the kind of leader our country will need. My, my conviction was not to the fact that he must be there, mm. but Nigerians should be allowed to choose who should be there. Peter. And I don't think Nigerians have made a wrong choice of doing that. We'll be having such an interesting discussion with Alaji Sani Musa. He was responsible for the PVCs that gave Nigerians a right to vote for change in the 2015 elections. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Jokeli Jadu. This is the Sunday interview. I'll see you again next week.